Hello, welcome to another short video, um, just explaining the basics really, mostly to help my students again, but could help you if you're about to start an electrical course, or even if you're an electrician who just have, need to have a little refresh. Um, <clears throat> a lot of this can come in quite useful, full finding and calculating, designing, testing even. So we're going to have a look at Ohm's Law Wheel. This is something you're probably doing the first year, maybe the second year, but hopefully the first year. Um, and essentially what it is, it's, it's showing how to create all the different equations we can use using Ohm's Law and the power equation. So this is Ohm's Law. Voltage is equal to the current times the resistance in the circuit. And the power equation is power in watts is equal to the voltage times the current in the circuit. Pretty straightforward. Now, how do we get these two equations into that many? Well, the answer is transposition and substitution. So let's start with uh, this equation. Now, we've got three parameters here. So that means we can get three equations out of it. <coughs> First one's already done for us. So let's just populate that. So I times R equals the voltage. Now we can move this around and transpose it to get another equation for current and a third one for resistance. So let's just do that. So I'll start off with my equation. Now I need to isolate the current, <coughs> which means getting rid of this resistance. Um, now I want to cancel it out on this side. And the rules of transposition says that whatever I do to this side, I must do to the other side. So if I want to cancel out resistance, I need to do the opposite function by itself. In this case, it's going to be divide by R. Now I've unbalanced the equation, so I must copy it this side. And now it's rebalanced, but you know I could tidy this up because r divided by r equals you know just one really. So there's no point in having it. <coughs> and then I can rewrite it like that. And that's our second equation. Current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So we put that in. Voltage over resistance. Okay, now let's go back to the original equation. Now let's transpose for R. Now, exactly the same process on this really, but this time I'm going to isolate current. Uh, sorry, isolate resistance, so remove current from this side and get over that side. That means cancelling it out. And again, I'm going to do the opposite function by itself. And whatever I've done this side, I must do this side. And then again, this is balanced, but makes no sense keeping it there. So let's cancel it out. And that ends up with our third equation. Resistance equal to the voltage divided by the current. So we can put this in now. Voltage divided by the current gives us resistance. So that's <coughs> the first three. So weird. We can also get three um, out of this. Um, we've already got one. The power is equal to the volts times the current. So let's go ahead and put that in. Volts times current. Again, we can transpose for the other two. So starting with our base equation, we can uh, isolate V, which means cancelling out I. And again, divide by itself, copy it this side, and cancel. So we end up with that. Let's put that in. So it's going to go in here. So power over current gives us voltage. And again, if we start from the base current, uh, base equation, this time, we can isolate for I, current, which means getting rid of V. <coughs> now, so we must cancel it by doing the opposite function by itself, copying it that side, and then cancel it. 
So we've got an, another equation. Power over volts gives us current. And we can put that in here. Power over volts. OK. So that's about all we can get out of those two equations there. Um, but what we can do is do something called substitution. That's where um, we put another equation into an equation. Um, and we normally do that when we haven't got enough parameters or you know, we're kind of limited with options. And we start playing with the equations for what we've got to see if we can calculate what we need. So for example, if I replace voltage with this equation, which is I times R, I times R gives us volts. So instead of putting volts in there, I can put I times R, which will give us I times R times I, that bit being that equation. And we can tidy this up and call it I squared times R, because we've got two I's there, so I squared times the R. And we end up with this equation, which you might have seen. It's quite a common one. P equals I squared R. You're going to use that a lot. So we can put that in now. <coughs> I squared R. And again, like we did before, we can now transpose to get another equation for current and another equation for resistance. So let's go ahead and do that. First, <coughs> Let's get one for resistance, which means uh, uh, getting rid of this I squared. Now, just recognize that that is all one term. So if it's being multiplied, to cancel it out, we need to divide it by itself again, I squared. And because we've unbalanced the equation, we must rebalance it by copying it the other side, I squared. And then we can cancel it out. Now we've got resistance is equal to P over I squared. And let's put that in. So resistance P over I squared. Good. Let's go back to this original equation, P equals I squared R. And now this time we'll isolate for current. So P equals I squared R. So our first job is to cancel out the resistance, so we're going to divide it by itself. We must copy it this side, and then we can cancel it. P over R equals I squared. But that's not really the end of it, is it? Because this is going, is going to give us I squared, but we want I current. So we need to do the opposite function by itself, which in this case is a square root. And just notice that I've square rooted everything that side, so I must square root everything this side. And then a square root on a square cancels it out, so we can get rid of that now. And we're left with another equation. Current is equal to square root of P over R. So current, square root, P over R. Okay, <coughs> so using this concept again, but this time, let's do it to current. So, the way we work out current in this equation was V over R. So if I take away that and replace it with V over R, then we can rewrite that to be V times V over R, or P equals V squared over R. And that's the next one we're going to play with. So first off, we've got that one. So V squared over R. Now we need to transpose for R. Now whenever there's something downstairs, we need to get it upstairs first, regardless of whether that's the thing we want to move or not. Um, it just makes transposition a lot easier when everything's upstairs. So the first step, regardless of anything, is to cancel it out this side and move it that side. So it's being divided, so the opposite function by itself would be to multiply it by R. I've unbalanced the equation, so I must copy it this side. 
and now I can cancel. So we can tidy that up. And in the same way as we had a minute ago, we now need to get V on its own, which means getting rid of that square. A minute ago, we square rooted it, so we're gonna do the same thing. And again, I square rooted everything on that side, so I must do everything on this side. Happy days, now we can cancel, and we've got another equation. Square root of R times P equals V, which we can put in here. P. Okay, so let's uh, now, let's just start from here and transpose for the remaining R. The first thing I need to do is get rid of this square root. The opposite would be to square everything. I've got to copy the same thing and then I can cancel it. which takes us back to the step we were before. Now I need to um, isolate R, because it's the only one left, which means getting rid of P to be a multiplier at the moment, so the opposite would be to divide by itself, copy it this side, cancel it the first side. So that gives us our final equation, V squared over P. V squared over P. And there we have it. Ohm's law will has been created. Wasn't that hard. Um, but you need to know transposition and substitution. It makes your life so much easier. You won't have to memorize so many equations. If you get stuck in an exam, you might be able to derive the equation. It's really important to practice your basic maths and you know, basic you know, scientific engineering skills, really, scientific notation. Oh, godsend. Otherwise, you're going to put in the wrong amount of zeros. Look it up. Anyway, that's it for this one. I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>